ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the FinTech Frenzy live stream. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about mainly Nubank. Adyen's going to be in the picture, a little bit of SoFi, a little bit of PayPal, uh, Robinhood, and maybe there's also some news on Open Door. but uh, I won't harm you guys with that just yet, okay? We're going to keep it mainly uh, to Nubank as they blew my mind today. I got super, super excited, massive Massive new product just launched on Nubank and entirely a new segment. So, um, yeah, and, and they just seem to be saying it in a small press release, almost like a little blog. I don't think people understand the the repercussions of what they're doing here. And um, I'm very excited. So I can't wait to talk about that today. Uh, Adyen as well, just mind-blowing news coming out of them. So um, very, very excited. Uh, let's see some comments here just as people are piling on, piling on in. Uh, is Steve coming on the sh uh, coming tomorrow to the SoFi Weekly? Probably not. A uh, champion of excuses says Steve is busy. Amit did a call in on one of his weeklies and Steve apparently uh, got promoted. Okay, well, I wasn't going to say that, but uh, yeah, he's, he's very busy right now. Um, <laughs> I should read ahead. Uh, that's funny. Uh, let's see who else is here. Andre, not a lurker. Okay, I saw this comment. This guy said, did I beat not a lurker? Did I? This comment was written at 3.43 p.m., five hours before the show, nearly five hours. And then one minute later at 3.44, not a lurker said, lol. LOL. Unbelievable. Dude, you don't have to sit in the chat that freaking long, guys. Yeah, seriously, congratulations. Um, okay, let's talk about the big news because this is just mind-blowing stuff. Um, really quick, I'm going to bring up Nubank's uh, investor relations just because this is a company that uh, potentially some people might be watching for the first time, don't don't mainly know this company. You know, a lot of people watch this content for SoFi, but, uh, you know, Nubank does not get enough coverage. You even see it in the viewership right now. Two minutes in, 44 views. If this was a SoFi video, it'd be like 150 plus, at, you know, at the two minute mark, eventually get to 300. We'll be at about 100 today, but I got to keep drilling it into you guys that Nubank is such an amazing company. The growth in this stock is not done and they're showing it right now because they're throwing out entirely new, like new segments into the business that we're going to see grow, that we're going to have to track into a completely new segment. Uh... It's just unbelievable. So, Nubank, not a hard one to, uh, to to sort of understand at first glance, so I'm just gonna do a quick one minute recap. Uh, essentially, this company is a digital bank, okay? They have about 95 million customers as of January of 2024. My estimates say that this will actually hit a million. We're probably gonna see in the next week or so. Probably in the next 10 days, uh, we're probably gonna hit 100 million users. That makes it the largest neobank in the world, okay? And they did that in Latin America. So as you can see, 53% of the adult population in Brazil. They also joined new, into Mexico uh, back whenever they only had like 23 million users. Then into Colombia when they're at 41.7 million users in 2021. Now, uh, potentially, we might see them enter Argentina next year. That's probably not going to be the focus for now. But with new government means, you know, a change in their policy for sure. By the way, they tried to enter Argentina back in 2019. They got some pushback. They didn't actually, they actually backed out. They hired like 12 employees in an Argentine office. Anyway, that stuff's all going to be, uh, I'm going to do an entire full breakdown uh, for the course members later on. Today was a big day. I got a lot done on the new bank presentation. So I'm really hot on new bank right now, but uh yeah, unbelievable growth in this company, as you can see from this chart. Customers exploding, that's exploding their revenue. Gross profits are going faster than revenue, and net income is going faster than gross profits. Uh, so the compounding is just unbelievable, and they do it mainly. I just want to show you guys one more slide, and then we can get off. Actually, two more slides. One is their four pillars. Yeah. Their cost to acquire is some of the lowest in the world, okay? Cost to serve is some of the lowest in the world. Their cost of funding and their uh, actual risk on their loans is extremely, extremely exciting. So in all four areas, they're just dominating. 
Um, and then the last slide I'll show is just all their products. So just like SoFi, uh, they're very diverse. So they have uh, checking and savings accounts, a bro or sorry, credit card, um, lending like personal loans, uh, brokerage. They have business accounts, okay? Which active business accounts is at 2.2 million. I have an update on this, but it's not going to be for active, it's, uh, active accounts. It's gonna be for total accounts. So don't think that you're about to see uh, you know, keep your expectations in, in line. I think about whenever they posted this, it was at like 3.4 million, something like that. Uh, PIX financing is uh, like PIX is like um, Fed now or maybe closer to something like Zelle or something like that. So um, yeah, those are their PIX users. So people that are uh, transacting online, you can pay businesses that way, all that kind of stuff. And then they also do insurance policies for uh, life insurance, mobile insurance, that sort of stuff. Um, now there, I've done way, way deeper dives into new banks. So that's not going to be today. I want to talk about their newest updates, new product announcements, uh, new milestones that they've hit. And let me show you that now. First off, I've been talking about new bank in terms of them going after business relationships. Okay super exciting stuff because this kind of goes just instead of a personal bank kind of gets them into smb banking which gets them into a more purchase volume which gets them into all sorts of different areas so one of the things that is one of their products right now that they don't talk about is business credit cards or they call it their pj card okay when <laughs> i just thought of that as as private jet but no it's just uh portuguese but anyway their, their PJ cards are their credit cards for businesses, which is essentially putting loans on businesses. But it's not uh, full financing loans. It's just small for individual purchases, you know, that sort of revolving debt that slowly gets paid off over time, but massive amounts of money. That's where Nubank has made all of their money. They were originally a credit card company. So look at this. Nubank reaches... 4 million business customers and launches new tools. Let's go over those new tools. I also wanted to talk because this is really exciting. Whenever you're a new bank merchant, it also allows you to per, uh, post on the new bank marketplace, which is essentially uh, a store only for those new bank customers. So think uh, the shop app, like Shopify has uh, their own sort of app that people can download where you know, they have like 100 plus million users that allows them to shop through, uh, you know, Shopify plus merchants, which is extremely exciting if you're a Shopify plus uh, user because you get to get um, massive reach, 100 plus million people and have pretty, pretty exclusive access to sell on that site. It's not as busy as something like an Amazon, for example, but yet the actual customers coming to that site is still very high. Nubank, it doesn't seem like it because we don't talk about Nubank a lot, but they're still at very similar reach, right? 100 million users almost up in the next week or so. So uh, Nubank getting these 4 million business customers are allowing them to sell products directly to Nubank customers. So very, very amazing. Mm -hmm. Let alone all the tools that they give you to uh, also make for a better product. And some of those they have launched today. So let's go through. I want to show you uh, some of this. So First off, uh, Nubank PJ, which is their small to mid-sized business accounts, okay? This number represents an increase of around 50%, 50% increase compared to the previous year. So the previous year before, uh, what is that? About uh, a little less than 3 million, right? So um, now getting above 4 million, absolutely amazing. But I want to see where this product launch is right here. As part of an ongoing expansion effort and focusing on providing uh, increasingly comprehensive experience, Nubank is launching their new product, Working Capital, their first loan solution into businesses. So now this has been the biggest thing that all these critics have been talking about for, so, or for, <laughs> for Nubank is that they have way too many deposits for the amount of loans that they're actually giving out or, or their LDR, their loan to deposit ratio, okay? If that gets too low, then people wonder like, okay, well, what are you going to be doing with those deposits? Where on the other end, like if it gets too high, then obviously cost of, uh, cost of funding gets too high. What's really, really exciting for uh, Nubank is they are now in multiple geographies. So 
whenever it comes to their cost of capital versus how much other businesses are get like what the other businesses are actually giving away they can give so much higher in certain areas because they can kind of balance their deposits between brazil and mexico let me give you an example really quick just because i'm getting uh excited <laughs> new banks uh new banks accounts in mexico give they just adjusted it uh today actually it was 14.25% or 14.75%, I think is what it is. 14.75% interest rates on their uh on their you know checking accounts in Mexico. But yet the actual federal interest rate in Mexico is about 11.25%. So they're actually giving much more than what the overall Mexican government is actually giving uh, you know, in an in, uh, in an interbank rate. The way that they end up doing that and actually making that affordable is because they're Brazilian to, uh, you know, the Brazil central bank rate is much, much lower. So they're able to fund Mexico with these super high rates and grow the users over there. Okay. That's important to understand because although we're giving such great rates to Mexico, we are still getting a benefit on the overall cost of funding. And as that shifts, as Mexico potentially lowers their interest rates, they can put some over at, uh, Sorry, as Brazil starts to lower their interest rates, they can put some more over at Mexico and potentially now Colombia is now coming in. It's this amazing feat that, uh, you know, New Bank has being a bank in all three of those countries. Anyway, let's get back to SMB banking because I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm getting excited. This is absolutely amazing. I think that this is going to grow tremendously fast, okay? They have been amazing at their loans. I can't wait to see the default rates and these sorts of things that they talk about next quarter. Uh, I mean, they just launched it. It's March 28th. So uh, let's see here. It's 15%. It'll go to 14.75% in April. They literally just posted about it today. Uh, here, I, ha I have the article up right now. New Bank Mexico announces a new annual yield for its saving product, Quenta New. Um, all right. Well, you were right. April 16th. Sorry. Going to 14.75 in April 16th. So it hasn't happened yet. My bad. Um, but pretty damn close. And the overall rate um, in Mexico went from 11.25% to 11%. So they're adjusting it, but it's still higher. Anyway, super exciting. Let's go back to the overall... Uh, business accounts. So with their working capital product that they launched, they also ended up launching three new tools. One, they're giving access for businesses to use desktop. They're seeing that there's such large businesses that are growing where they're like, okay, people can't be managing their businesses on a cell phone. So we want to actually make all their tasks available on desktop. They're doing that. They're now allowing for invoice itch issuance, which uh, they'll allow to issue, store, and manage invoices. You can send it directly to accountants or clients, whatever you want, uh, as well as actually doing shared access. So it's not just individual, like solo entrepreneurs that are joining a new bank. So now they have different roles that you can assign to people, like administrators, uh, consultation, or operators that you can assign different roles to within the own business accounts that they have to allow them to sort of adjust what you can allow them to see the you know, certain account numbers or, or uh, different things that you would potentially want to block away from certain employees. You can do that. Um, but yeah, unbelievable how fast they're pushing out all of these. <laughs> yeah. He said, he said, I have the account open. Of course, of course he's seeing it faster than me. Anyway, um, but uh, what's it called? Yeah, so this is unbelievable. New Bank is pushing out so many new options to their business accounts. They're realizing that at 53% population, they're only going to grow so much on the personal side. But on the business side, right now, like like their, their business funding or their business financing is at 0% of overall, you know, the, the amount of capital that's essentially uh, revolving in Brazil. They want to be the biggest player in that space, not a player, the biggest player. And they're starting from zero today with 4 million different accounts. Now, there will probably be a bunch of merchants that not only are going to use this, but a bunch of merchants that said, hey, 
I would love to bring my stuff over to New Bank, but you guys don't have loans for us just in case we get into a hot spot. Like we need to purchase more inventory or uh, potentially pay off loans where we're not supposed to get paid till this certain amount or even invoicing not being, uh, you know, not having an actual dashboard to deal with all of our invoices. Those are the problems that they're trying to address right now. Small to mid-sized businesses is not a large portion of their business today, but I promise you guys, well, I can't, I don't want to promise anything. It's my wholehearted belief that I believe that small to mid-sized businesses at Newbank is going to take over. Because why would you not want to function your business at Newbank if you can get access to 100 million users for free, right? This is a free account. The credit card is free to use, not like the, the, the credit isn't. <laughs> You'll have to pay it back. But essentially, uh, to actually sign up and use these products, right? Um, yeah. All of their different uh, small to mid-sized businesses get access to PICS. They get access to tap to pay like on iPhone and Android. So you can set up and take payments directly, uh, you know, from an iPhone or Android. All the different tax centers and, and client centers that they also add on there to allow for you to do all your tracking there. This is going to be a massive part of Nubank. Cannot wait for this. I hope they speak about it next quarter because... And then also, I want to see how fast it takes them to get uh, business accounts also to places like Mexico. That would be really, really exciting. Uh, what you say of small businesses wanting to work with new sounds similar to why customers want to work with Shopify. It's, it's yeah, it's exactly the same. Now, the one thing that I think is a, a benefit to a company like Square is that whenever they bring over Square users, they have such integration with Cash App. Now, Nubank, I think, might even be stronger than that, which is pretty exciting considering how early on they are with, with business accounts. But because you have 53% population in this one bank, okay, that is unheard of. The, the network effects of businesses going into, like, cross-selling from one personal uh, bank service over to business is unbelievable. Like, we're talking push notifications or emails that go out to people saying, hey, did you know we offer all of this for free with massive benefits? They even have money boxes. So the Quenta new product that I was talking about, it's very similar to like SoFi vaults or something like this, where you can kind of split your money into different areas and it all earns massive amounts of annual yields, sometimes upwards of 15%. Well, they do that for businesses as well. So like, what are we talking about, guys? You know, I'm thinking about cleaning up my position of new and bumping it up to a thousand shares. I hear about people doing this where they care about their, their share counts being even. I don't care at all, but, um, Hey, I mean, do you, I'm not, I'm not trying to talk. I'm just talking about why I'm getting so excited. I'm not, I'm really not trying to get anyone to buy. I'm just like, you know. The people come here to ask about or to hear about Newbank. I'm here to talk about why I'm freaking excited about Newbank. Also, I want to put out this video. I, I, I did a SoFi Weekly episode recently where I talked about the importance of culture. And I wonder if companies like, like SoFi or something like this actually kind of struggle with culture. From some of the reviews that I can see that it, it actually seems to be the case, that it's a problem. And you see these companies like Amazon, Shopify, Adyen, Newbank, like some of the most exciting companies in, in the entire world, and all they obsess over is culture, right? And whenever I say Amazon, I mean, uh, you know, <laughs> more of the uh, executive parts, not the factory workers, I guess. But um, yeah, I, I'm a total believer. I need to start showing more of David Velez, and there will be a lot about him in... Uh, in like whenever I do the full breakdown, probably like 10 pages on him. Uh, this dude is unbelievable. Like maybe one of the best founders I've ever seen. The more I watch of him, I'm like, gives me total uh, Toby Lucky vibes. First principle thinker, unbelievable, full founder shares. Like, like the, a decision does not get passed in Newbank without his call. It's completely his company. Um, so you have to be a believer in, in those executives in order for it to make it work. But yeah.
Uh, lots of people in Mexico still keeping their money under the pillow. New offering 15% is a game changer. On top of that, they uh, deposit the 15%. 365. Oh, I, I got you. Oh, it's daily. It's a daily deposit. Yeah, see, that's what I mean. Like, like unbelievable. Uh, I don't have that in Canada, you know? It's crazy the the step difference that they went from going from cash to one of the best digital banking experiences way past America, by the way. And it's also because of the adoption as well. I find like, and and I don't know, it's more like chicken or the egg. Is the products making the adoption spike really high? Or is it the, um, like sort of the, sorry, is the adoption making the products really good? Or is it the products that are making the adoption really good. Because you see this in like China and a lot of uh, other Asian sort of regions where they have these super apps where people are just completely 100% for, for a very long time, happy to use QR codes and, and digital payments for everything. Okay. Mexico right now, it's because honestly, it's my full belief. It's because Nubank has not been there for a long time. Talk uh, probably 10 years ago, New Bank, or sorry, Brazil also had a massively high amount of unbanked population. Huge, okay? And now that's like very, very low. I think it's less than 20% or maybe I'm even mis mixing my numbers up. It might even be less than like 15%. Uh, uh, America is around 5%, by the way. But anyway, the importance of that is that people underestimate how much of that number changed strictly because of companies like Nubank. Now, there are other companies that have also made that adoption uh, sort of increase. Nubank is not the only player. Some people get that impression of me whenever I say that. It's not true. They are the biggest player, however. Uh, but like you look at PicPay, they have a f huge amount of customers as well. Um, but yeah. Yeah, 15%. It's higher than their actual uh, Mexican like interbank rates. So uh, the Fed now, or sorry, Fed now, the Federal Reserve interest rates right now uh, is like 5.25%. The equivalent would be like SoFi offering 6.5% in their checking account. That is unbelievable. So for, for Mexico's government to be offer or saying that the rate is set at 11.25% and new banks offering 15 is massive. But it's because they're funding it through a, a blended mix between Brazil and Mexico. <laughs> Gary Gordon DM'd me saying new is trash. No, he didn't. He's a big fan. Or he's not a big fan, but uh, he, he said that he does like new. Oh, yeah. I love talking about New Bank, man. It's like one of my favorites. That position might be one of the fastest growing positions I've ever, like, I've ever had. Because not only since I've started acquiring has the company freaking uh, three point something x okay? But also, and, and that was like in the matter of like a year and a bit. Like, we're talking like a year and three months. A year to, or sorry, the last 365 days... The company has increased 150%. And I think we're like, now with all these new product launches, I still think that there's a long runway to go. And I really want to talk about Adyen as well, because that's another one of those um, companies that it's really hard to look at uh, other companies and try to compare and contrast different valuations because the growth is just so unbelievable. And that what the numbers that we're looking at today are not going to be anything like the numbers that we look at a year from now. And so how do you put a valuation on that? Because we're not holding for this year. We're not holding for the next three years. We're not holding for the next five years. I want to see where is this company going to be in 2035? You know, what does that look like? And that gets me very excited. <laughs> with double G. <laughs> Is that his name? Double G? No, I, I think that uh, people have a hard time liking somebody that disagrees with them on um, 
like like from that perspective i think gary gordon uh respects my decision in investing in sofi and i respect his decision in not uh and we just have good conversation whenever you sit with someone after an interview for like an hour plus just chatting uh you you get to know a guy Who is New's biggest competition? I mean, there, there's a bunch, but I'd probably say the the largest one is probably Mikado Pago. But they have a couple. I can show you a slide, maybe. Or can I? Uh, actually, I probably can't. No, I'm not going to do that again. I've got a paid report. I don't think I should be sharing <laughs> any pages. Um, oh, yeah. What? I got my... Oh, I'm not reading that. <laughs> um, even in my country, we're using QR codes for payments in a street food stalls. Just scan the vendor QR code, uh, key in amount, and show the vendor. What country are you referring to? New is down under $12, clearly going to zero. Pumper. <laughs> Tevis, when did we talk about this? What we did a stock tank recently, like not too long ago. What price was the stock then? I know he's kidding, by the way, 100%. Uh, for the people that don't know that, Mikado Pago is uh, mostly used for phone top ups and paying utility bills here. Yeah, but they, just like Newbank, are rolling out new features all the time. And they do want to be a full-fledged neobank, just like uh, Newbank. Newbank has a much, uh, like, a very, very exciting head start. But they're not the only neobank. There's lots of neobanks. But Robert, actually, uh, if you would like, I'd love to have you on the channel sometime as, I, I assume, uh, you you said you're in Mexico, correct? Uh, I'd love the firsthand experience of, of New Bank there. Mercado Pago app is a mess. <laughs> it's probably because they're just promoting uh, Mercado Libre's app the entire time. New penny stock. I wonder what the most expensive penny stock is. Uh, it's not a penny stock, obviously. But some people get confused what a penny stock is. Anything under five bucks is a penny stock. Um, and so I wonder. I said, what country are you in? He said, outside of America. <laughs> okay. You think someone's going to track you down uh, because you're on a co like comment section of a person that has 90 live viewers? Filmed eight months ago, it was seven dollars and eighty-five cents. Yeah, that was probably in the. Uh, there was sort of a plateau in the seven to eight dollar mark. We sat there for about six months, but then obviously since then have uh, broken out. Tevis exclusively drinks water in Celsius cans to shamelessly promote the stock. I love it. <laughs> He does do it. I actually had a Celsius today. Play the Oscars music so Tanner can move on to SoFi talk. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about SoFi really quickly because it's good to get a couple com heads in, uh, in the areas from time to time. And I was reading up on Brad Freeman um, Today, I thought that this was a great post. I wanted to read this. Also, is anyone else's... Yeah, it says I'm not logged into X right now. It, it keeps, like, logging me out and saying that, like, I need to keep authenticating myself and doing all these, like, robot checks or something. I don't know if people are, like, trying to log in, but I don't know how I tell, uh, like, X. Like, hey, just, <laughs> like, even if you ask me for, like, to authenticate or send me a text or something, but... It keeps logging me out and acting extremely weird. Anyway, I, it can't seem to bring it up very well, so I'll just read the text here. It says, um, Brad Freeman says, it's entertaining to debate uh, the different SoFi bull cases. 
But what's the bottom line? We have a team who consistently meets and beats targets despite a loan moratorium, despite a historic rate height cycle, despite regional bank crisis, they deliver or over deliver. Even through the SPAC and free money age in which firms offered multi-year targets and failed miserably to meet them, SoFi delivered. Uh, so what do I care about? Is that the fact that they are uh, deliver on their 67 cent 2026 gap EPS guidance. That's the middle point between the 55 cents and the uh, 80 cents. He said, and all I want to focus on are the ingredients that will allow that to happen. Strong underwriting, capital market access at healthy gain on sale margin, ramping profits to feed book value and capital ratios, rapid growth and leverage for fin services, a convincing tech platform, revenue growth acceleration. The rest is noise. That's really freaking important. I don't think that uh, that people talk about this enough. He goes on about his his uh, not not price targets, but essentially he's saying like. Um, you know, if they do reach that EPS, which is about a 34% return uh, CAGR from 2024 to 2026, that he believes it can get a comfortable uh, margin about 20 times on their earnings. And uh, that'll hold up a pretty good price on the stock. Anyway, I'm not going to keep going with that. I just wanted to read that off because there is so much freaking noise on SoFi these days. People go on and on about uh, different companies doing well. Like, like, Robinhood putting up this credit card does not hurt SoFi. And it's very hard for people to, to wrap their head around that because they just think like, oh, well, one company did a thing, so then all other companies are going to die off. Like as if, you know, I brought up the example of Google Cloud, um, Microsoft Azure, and AWS. Yes, I mean, directly they do affect each other. They're all growing, okay? Um, people get really in their heads about one company posting... Uh, you know, one new product or something like this, it doesn't mean anything. Fundamentally, like the product that public, public.com just put out about their options is way better than Robinhood's, okay? They're paying you to do options because they're splitting the, the rate in which they're making on the on the contracts. It's, it's a great product. Why aren't people worried about that at Robinhood? You tell me. You can't compare SoFi and Hood. I mean, you can, but uh, two different models. SoFi is a charter bank. Hood is a brokerage. Yeah, I think people are more worried about the idea of Robinhood becoming more of a full neobank, that one-stop shop like the Visa CEO was talking about. Um, the thing that I think is important is just the demographics. SoFi really does go after an affluent user. And so or Robinhood goes after more of the daily traders sort of, or sorry, day traders sort of, um, maybe not as affluent market. Maybe you could say that that's changing with the retirement accounts, but still it's quite fixated in that market. And so is every other fintech, by the way. You see Cash App, you see Chime. Um, what are some other ones? Dave, all those ones, they kind of don't go after the affluent market. And whenever you're talking about that space in which uh, you're competing at high interest rates for really, really great users, there is not a whole lot of players playing in that space. And that is the interesting part that I think is exciting about SoFi and why, in my opinion, we should be enjoying Rob Robinhood potentially as an investment, but also as a customer. Um, but not saying that, oh, once one company does one thing, that that means that that's a sell rating on another company. Uh Jeff Bezos did an adultery. <laughs> why isn't SoFi or why isn't Noto uh, throwing out morality for shareholders too? You know, maybe explore all options. I don't know. I'm, did an adultery is funny though. I like the, I haven't heard it worded that way. <laughs> people are bullish on Hood because of the stock price increase. I remember people screaming bankrupt for Hood at $8. 100% true. 100% true. And now people are saying that too. I even saw like 
Arnie talking about that, which is like someone that I respect and think that he posts good stuff. But he said like, uh, Hood thrives in chaos. SoFi cries in chaos. And I'm like, name one event where SoFi has cried in chaos. They've thrived in chaos too. We've had our largest product get swept out from under us. There was a massive bank crisis in which SoFi uh, delivered an FDIC increase of like 2.25 million in the matter of, or sorry, two point was it 2.25 or is it 2.5? Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, they 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 pulled out that product in like two weeks. SoFi absolutely, absolutely does well in chaos. I think Noto is 100% a wartime CEO. 100%. In fact, I would say that Vlad is not. Um... Gold card uh, APRs are ridiculous. I dropped my blue wrench when I saw it last night on bootleg. Who cares about APRs? Have you ever, like, has anyone gotten a credit card or said yes or no to a credit card based on APRs? Don't hold revolving debt. Don't worry about the APR. Pay it off. If you're going to get that card for 3% cash back, but then you're willing to pay a difference of 16% to 20 to 27% or wherever the range is, what's the point of accepting the 3% cash back? Choose a different card. Like, well, as much as I don't like Vlad, he did survive the crazy GME saga. Yeah, but that's not, I don't think that that is what makes a um like a wartime ceo i i think it would be pretty you'd be pretty hard pressed to not survive uh that fiasco it wasn't that big i think it got overblown because it was the loudest the loudest people who were engaged in that but um i don't think that that was a disaster and in fact it did tear the company apart they did see uh you know real loss in monthly active users so did they thrive during that time? No. Did they survive? Sure. Vlad wine and dine to mitt. I know. I hope so. I hope so. It's freaking awesome. I get 3% cash back on SoFi credit card. Yeah, but it's very different. So that is that that's awesome, but that's also promotional. Not forever. people come at me some like like b dubs was like ah man you're too young to understand debt uh because i'm not like you know fast paying my mortgage and then i also see comments of like aprs on credit cards like what <laughs> uh, i know what good debt is and what bad debt is i unfollowed both Amit and arnie today why would you do that why can't people just uh like like you're just disagreeing with them in this moment you know it, it's not the end of uh my respect for either one of them i just don't think that arnie's right in that one particular sentence you think stone is a competitor to new i mean it is it 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 is the problem is is that now I'd be way less excited to hold Stone uh, today because New Bank is going to absolutely get into the uh, SMB banking side, payment side, uh, financing side. That's a a big competitor. So, so this is another thing too: is that whenever you have fifty three percent of the population as your audience, and David Velez has recently came out and said that. They're like where they want to get to is about 84% of the population. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone, anyone and everyone that is seven years or older is now their new total addressable market. So it's not, you know, adults. They said any, like all payments are going to go digital. That's their belief. And that even people who are as young as seven are still making purchases. That's happening today in America. That's happening in Brazil. 
that's normal. Um, people don't think about it, but you want everyone as a client. And especially Cash App sees this, Venmo sees this. All these new uh, fintechs are seeing this is that if you have a relationship that is, you know, in custody of the parents with allowance, these sorts of things through, through child accounts, that whenever they do come of age, it's as easy as an ownership transfer. And then that becomes a permanent client of that bank. And you already had their information to start with uh, whenever they were a minor. That is the league in which Nubank plays it. They need to get into those the the mind and hearts of payments for children because as they age, they become the future generation of of users. Um, Crossroads, I did see this, so that's pretty exciting. Um, that a, a Nubank guy who was, you know, that's the golden standard of of defaults and and managing credit risks on credit cards is, is the credit card guy for, for Robinhood. I did see the, see you post that. It's cool. <laughs> Robinhood reportedly in talks to acquire SoFi. I'm adopting you. <laughs> um... What's it called? No other questions? Anyway, so yeah, I'd be really worried if I was a Stone Co. Uh, sort of employee or, or C-suite because whenever you have 53% of the population, in my opinion, going to continue to rise, businesses are going to continue to rise, um, rising at extremely fast paces, there's going to be a, like a true moat over there. That is network effects at their at their ultimate high. Very very exciting. Multiple geographies. Newbank is an absolute killer. All right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I did actually have some ADN news, but we're already at forty something minutes. I'll talk about it tomorrow. Um. Addien's another one. I, I I probably should not have sold it. Um, made a mistake thinking that that stock was not going to continue to rise. I think that it's going to break all-time highs. This company is just gaining so many new merchants. They're posting on it at a daily rate. Massive, massive merch. Okay, I'll leak one. I'll leak one. We'll talk a little bit more tomorrow, but just for now, look at this. Addien partnered with Adobe Commerce to enable online and in-store payments for global enterprise merchants. Adobe Commerce is no small player. They are freaking huge. That's unbelievable. Anyway, they keep closing. Everyone's calling me crazy for picking out these stocks that are uh, uh, not in, you know, that are not super retail popular, but they're just doing unbelievable. And, and it was my mistake selling that company and I see it now and, yeah. Stupid. Tanner, you can buy back your shares. I don't want to right now. I run from Adobe and PayPal. That's okay. <laughs> Crossroads, it's not the it's not even the only merchant. They they posted like three or four in the last three or four days. Like we're talking big companies, thousands of stores. They're closing like this. Like it's just it's unbelievable. Okay. By the way, Mike, uh, people have to re it's it's Adobe Commerce. Okay. It's like setting up stores for for merchants. I'm not talking about a uh, Photoshop. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate your time. Hopefully you guys uh, have had a good week so far. I'll see you tomorrow. So far weekly tomorrow. What is it? Good Friday tomorrow. Something like that. Peace.